some fantastic here today. Um, I'm Kate Parker, I'm the director of the Kids Walk Coalition, and this is Matt Rufo, and he's our program manager for the Kids Walk Coalition. And Matt's also stationed part-time at the Department of Public Works within the city of New Orleans, so he has a unique opportunity to understand some of the issues that are affecting um, walking and biking from the city perspective as well as from the end user. Um, and also next to Matt is Shalanda Cole, and she's the program manager for the Louisiana Trans uh, Develop Transportation Development Safe Routes to School Program. And then Pamela Stewart is here from the International School of Louisiana. And ISL has a new Safe Routes to School grant, and even before they receive funding for infrastructure, they have a bang up um, educational program to talk to you about, about getting kids more active um, by walking and biking in their school. So, and they're a charter school that pulls from kids who, from uh, all over the city, uh, so they have a great story to tell. Um, so um, again, I just want to thank you for being here. I'd like to just remind you of a couple of things. Um, you know, children right now are not very active. Uh, most, most of our children are not meeting the recommended guidelines of physical activity. Their, their guidelines say that they need at least an hour a day, and fewer than half of our kids are getting that, and even fewer adults are getting 30 minutes that they're supposed to be getting a day. So, we all have a lot of work to do in this area to increase our physical activity. Um, we also know that walking and biking for transportation are important sources of daily physical activity, but they've declined dramatically in the last few decades. Um, between 1977 and 1995, the number of all walking trips decreased by 32%, and there's been a similar decrease in trips made by adults walking to work. Um, reversing the decline in these rates of walking and biking, even for just these short trips, presents a major opportunity for improving our health. However, the percentage of kids walking to school or biking to school has decreased by 68% from 1969 to 2001. And part of that is because of the parents' perceptions of that route between home and school. And that's a real key factor that Matt is going to talk about today, is what makes up the route, what makes up the environment around the school. He's going to explain a little bit about some of the school audits that the Kids Walk Coalition has completed. Um, perceived safety from traffic and crime are definitely associated with higher walking from, for kids and their families who like in school. So the more safe you feel, the more likely you are to walk or bike. Um, and likely safe, safety has been a huge obstacle. So that's why non-infrastructure programs or educational programs and helping kids and families feel more safe by taking steps on their own have been really, really effective. So the Safe Routes to School program, by you know including the infrastructure improvements that they make by building crosswalks and improving signage also funds non-infrastructure programs, educational programs to help kids walk and bike more by holding bicycle rodeos, bike safety trainings, crossing guard trainings, things that make it possible for the school environment to be a safer place. Um, we know that New Orleans has a unique school environment. We have lots of charter schools, over half of our charter schools, over half of our schools are charter. So, Lots of them draw from all around the city. So the idea of a neighborhood school is not quite there as it used to be in New Orleans. However, we all live within a stone's throw of a school, right? So if we improve the environment around one school, that's going to have a ripple effect and improve all the environment for where we all live. So I think this is really a, a unique opportunity that we have to think about these schools as a nexus for a potential improvement. And then once we do that, we'll all have a better environment, not just the kids going to and from that school, but the families and the adults who live near those schools who may not even necessarily go to that school. So we have a great opportunity here. Um, I'd like to ask, ask Matt now to talk a little bit about the report that he's uh, put together on the condition of sidewalks around schools. Thanks, Matt. some help 
from our graduate students at Tulane University uh, to go out and audit the pedestrian, bicycling, and walking conditions around every elementary and middle public school in the city. Uh, and what we see here is a, uh, a map of all of those different elementary and middle schools throughout the city. Um, we did a one block radius around every school. We did a combined total of about, um, so we did 63 schools, uh, school areas, which includes 77 different school programs because some school areas, school sites have more than one school program in it. Um, there's some school buildings that share a RSD school plus a charter school, for example. Um, and so we covered 77 different schools. Um, pretty good distribution throughout the council districts because these schools are scattered throughout the city. They're you know, located within communities. They're not just all centralized in one place. Um, we did a total of 173 miles of sidewalks that we surveyed, uh, and that covers nearly a million linear feet throughout the city, which represents about 5% of the entire city's streets and sidewalks. Um, and because those school areas are located in such a broad you know, dispersion throughout the city, it's a pretty good sample of the city as a whole. Um, moving on. Uh, and so what we set out to do was to look at a few different things. The condition of the sidewalk, is it flat? Is it um, paved? Is there, are there weeds growing out of it? Uh, looking at signage, is the signage clear? Is it in good condition? Can motorists see it? Um, and uh, we also looked at crosswalks. Are they painted? When was the last time they were painted? Sometimes you can tell a crosswalk hasn't been painted, repainted since it was first um, put down there in the first place. Uh, we also looked at curb ramps. The curb ramps we associate with uh, users of wheelchairs, um, but also children under the age of 15 are permitted in the city to bicycle on sidewalks. And so if you have curb ramps at every intersection, you know, the child can bicycle from one block to the next pretty easily. And so all of these different um, aspects of our city's infrastructure have an impact on the walkability, the bikeability, and the safety of our streets. And so um, these are the results of them. And uh, you don't have to, I don't have to get up here and tell you that, you know, some sidewalks are in bad shape. But I'll show you some photos anyway. Um, this is McDonough 35. Um, this is the 1500 block of Dallaire Street. Uh, what we see here is, um, you know, grass growing out of there, ponding taking place. Um, perhaps this part of the sidewalk was paved at one time, but since, since completely deteriorated. A lot of this has to do with the fact that a lot of properties in the city are blighted, the owners are no longer there attending to it, and because the owners of properties are responsible for maintaining the sidewalks in front of their properties, uh, it just goes, this happens as a result. And this is, you know, one or two blocks, less than one block away from a public school, we've done 35. Um, this is, we've done a 42 to 1500 block, 1600 block of Tante Street. And um, what we see here is a combination, a uh, sidewalk that looks like it was never really built and maintained, plus some obstacles in the way, uh, you know, trash can, um, some actual vegetation, you know, which is some people might think, you know, oh, this is great, you know, we've got a, a very pastoral landscape here in front of my house, but for everyone else who's, you know, trying to get by, you know, you don't want to have to walk in, you know, the middle of the street to just simply get to school or, or enter community in general.